the dark side of the looking glass, the corruption of our capital markets. This will move at a brisk college lecture pace. Take about an hour. Why should you give me an hour? Because our capital markets means your savings. The main event is to understand that rogue Wall Street firms are killing small American businesses for profit. I address that in the main presentation by first explaining the mechanics of stock trades and a loophole that exists in those, that system, how the loophole can be exploited, why the SEC is doing nothing, and I walk through a recent scandal that I believe ties these different elements together. There's a short postscript that gets more technical, goes into some of the legal aspects of what's going on, uh, a, a regulation called Regulation Show, how this can be understood in the context of public choice theory, and what can be done. How do stocks trade? Grandma on the left has savings, the fellow on the right has stock. Grandma's going to buy the stock but her savings. The money in stock has to change hands. That's called settlement. In most countries, they change hands two or three days after the trade. That's called T plus two or T plus three. And importantly, the money and stock change hands simultaneously. In the US, however, while we operate on a T plus three system, the mechanisms for exchanging money and stock have become divorced, so it's possible for money to settle whether or not the stock settles. In reality, grandmas aren't calling strangers making stock deals. We have stock brokers. Stock brokers work in, uh, in places called broker dealers or BDs. Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs, Bear Stearns, E-Trade, they're all BDs. I'll represent them as blue circles. There are about 2,000 of them in this country arranged in a hub and spoke system around a central organization called the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, also called the DTCC. The DTCC acts as a central back office for Wall Street, where three days after a trade, uh, when it's time for money and stock to settle, it settles at the DTCC. How does it settle? Trades can be settled through the DTCC. In reality, however, settlement usually occurs within the DTCC. Grandma was talking to her broker, the fellow on the right talked to his. These brokerage houses have accounts at the DTCC, and when their customers are trading out at the spokes, what really happens is the money and stock shift around within accounts at the DTCC. There is also something called X clearing. That's when two broker dealers settle directly with each other external to the DTCC. Two point five billion shares per day trade on the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. These trades settle through the DTCC, within the DTCC, and back and forth directly among broker dealers via X clearing. Let's get back to our simplified system of grandma and a stock seller and see how the system handles delays. Suppose they do a trade when it's time to settle. Grandma's money settles through the system, but something comes up that blocks the fellow from settling his shares through the system. There could be all kinds of legitimate problems. He might be using paper stock and it's stuck in a bank vault, or it's at home lost in the closet or something. Maybe he signed the wrong piece of paper on some form. For one reason or another, he can't settle the trade, and you don't want the system to just grind to a halt. So the system creates an IOU. But note, it's not an IOU for money. It's an IOU for stock. It gets sent through the system. Grandma doesn't see that as anything other than normal stock. Her brokerage account says that she holds stock, not an IOU for stock. In most respects, the whole system just sees this as normal stock. It's only in the back offices that keep track of what's an IOU and what is Assume that on day T plus 4, T plus 5, the blockage clears up, the fellow is able to send his stock through the system, and he wipes out his IOU. Great. Imagine, however, that a guy shows up who wants to game the system, taking advantage of this loophole I just described. He's a villain or a miscreant. I paint his desk red to remind, to remind you he's a miscreant. He performs a trade with grandma. Three days later, her money comes through the system. But he says, you know what? Something's blocking me from sending my share. So he creates an IOU and sends it through the system. Does it again and again and again. But imagine he doesn't really have a blockage keeping him from settling his shares. In fact, maybe he doesn't have any stock. 
What he's doing is gaming the settlement system so that he ends up with grandma's money, and all he's done is issue some stock IOUs to grandma. He's failed to deliver the stock that he sold. That's a strategic failure to deliver. It's strategic in the sense of deliberate. It's not an honest error. He just exploded a loophole. And in 2006, people are saying naked short selling, and they're saying fraudulent stock transfer. There are subtle differences, but the common denominator is that the IOUs are not sincere IOUs. They were strategically created. I'm going to mark them as FTDs for failure to deliver and paint them as red just to make them easier to track.